I need to exploit your cuteness so that people are interested in watching this video. Paul, you gotta look at the camera, dude. Hey, what's up everyone? Danny here. In a lot of my build videos, I install unactivated Windows 10 under the system because it's free. If you don't know what I mean by this, I'm talking about being able to use Microsoft's Windows 10 like to 99.9% .9 of its full capabilities without paying a single cent while using the tools that Microsoft themselves provide you. Now, a lot of people in the comments have asked if I can do a tutorial on this, so that's what this video is going to be. I'm going to show you the exact process to show you how quick and pain-free it is. Now, if you've done this before uh, or you know how to do it, then uh, please don't go yet because I do want you to stick around so we can have a discussion at the end of the video regarding uh, why Microsoft is basically allowing this as well as other topics that usually come up in other videos when it comes to like uh, Windows keys and uh, activation such as buying a gray market key from a key reseller, whether it be eBay or uh, Kingwin or SCD keys or any of those other ones, uh, as well as the topic of just pirating Windows in general. So please stick around for that discussion, but other than that, let's jump right into this tutorial. Alright, so I'm going to do this tutorial for all the people out there who are trying to create a bootable uh, USB flash drive. So the media will be installed on this. So you're going to need a working computer and you're going to need a flash drive that's at least 4 gigabytes. So uh, I'm going to plug this in right now and... Uh, if you have anything on the flash drive, it's going to get wiped. So just make sure all your important stuff is taken off beforehand. So I'll stick this in right now and we'll see if it gets detected. So here's my flash drive. So in my computer, it will be volume N, this one right here. So it's 64 gigabytes. Um, all right, so we will minimize this for now. And we want to go uh, to Google and type in Windows 10 download and I'll have the link down below but the first official Microsoft website is where you're gonna get this file from so you're gonna go click on this one download Windows 10 disk image which is the ISO file this is what you want to get right here so create Windows 10 installation media so click this to download the tool and it's a pretty small file 17.5 megabytes so once you have that click on the executable and this should pop up Throughout the whole process, it takes a little time to think and load, so uh, make sure you have a little bit of spare time to do this. So this is just the license in terms of agreement. If you hit decline, it's going to exit the setup. So you can read through this on your own time. We won't do it here, so I accept. This is the one you want to choose. So we're going to create installation on the USB flash drive uh, so that it can be done on another PC, you know, the fresh PC you're building uh, with the blank hard drive. So click this and you're going to click next. And these are the recommended settings um, that it detects what your PC currently has. So mine currently has 64-bit uh, and English. And uh, if you want to, you can change these options. Uh, and then we'll go to next. And then, and this step, you can either download the ISO file so that you can create the DVD or use a different program to create the bootable USB drive later. Or you can just use this and it'll detect the flash drive, which right here it says you need four gigabytes. And this is what you're going to want to choose. So flash drive is plugged in, hit next, and it detects it. It also detects my phone, which is this one plus driver. But you're going to go to uh, this here. I'll bring that other window back up. So remember, this was my flash drive that I plugged in, volume N. So you're going to choose that. And now hit next, and then we play the waiting game. What it's going to do is it's first going to install or download the ISO and then uh, create the media for you. So depending on how fast your internet is, this might take a while. So I'm just going to fast forward real quick and let this thing do its thing. And I will be back when this part is done. Okay, so that took about 15 minutes. Um, but the flash drive is ready to go now. So we'll click finish. And at this point, you can just follow the instructions once you plug your flash drive in and boot from it. But I'm just going to continue the tutorial for those of you who are uncomfortable and want to actually see the process before you do it yourself. So let's switch over. I'll show you the installation on this system right here. So I have one hard drive in there and it is a wiped hard drive. So it'd be equivalent to if you bought something new and uh, put it in your system. So I'll show you right now. I'm going to turn it on. And when it does turn on, it's going to detect 
Nothing. All right. So it said reboot and select proper boot device. So I'm going to plug in the flash drive now. And if we're lucky, it will be auto detected when we reboot. Most of the time it does detect it. If it doesn't, then it's not a huge problem. You just spam F11, F10, or delete, whichever one it is to get to the uh, boot menu. All right, so it, it was detected and it is going to start the installation now. And apologies ahead of time that I have to record the screen with this part of the process. It's because there's no operating system on the computer, so I can't use like OBS or AMD Relive or GeForce Experience. So please bear with me. So this is the first thing that you're gonna see when you boot into the flash drive. Uh, you can change these settings to wherever you like. For the most part, if you're in the US, then the default is what you're gonna be using. So you hit next. When this pops up, it's gonna ask you to activate Windows. You can either put in a key if you have one, but since we're doing unactivated Windows, you're just gonna tell them right here, you don't have a key. You don't have to put in any fake numbers or any of that. You tell them straight up, I do not have a product key. You click that and then you can just continue. On this screen, you choose what version of Windows you want. I'm gonna choose Pro. And then here are the terms and agreement. Again, if you want to, you can read these, but we're gonna hit accept. All right, we're gonna go to um, custom install. Yeah, we're not doing an upgrade. So custom install Windows. I'm gonna click that and we have the empty unallocated space hard drive. You can select that and then hit next. And then it starts the installation. Uh, I'm gonna let this fast forward and then I'll come back once this is complete. Throughout the installation, Windows might restart, and if it does, you don't have to touch anything. It'll do everything on its own, so you can just leave it and uh, just continue waiting. Okay, once it's done installing, it's gonna ask for some information. So, first one is what region? I'm gonna choose United States, you choose whatever region you're in. And then the keyboard layout, US again for me. No, I'm not gonna add a second keyboard layout. On this screen, it's gonna want to connect to a network. So right now it seems like it's having trouble identifying mine. It says there's no internet even though I just used this system and it is plugged in with an ethernet cable. So I'm just gonna go down and skip this for now, which is down here. So I'm gonna skip this and hopefully it figures itself out as we go through this. Then you put in your name, I'm just gonna put in N-O-A-B. All right, next. Super memorable password. I'm not gonna put a password on this, but you should for your own system. And then, do you want Cortana? I usually do no. And then these are all the privacy settings things. A lot of people recommend to turn everything off. Um, <laughs> but you can read through these and decide if you want them on or not. All right, so it looks like we are pretty much good to go. Let me zoom out here so you can see the whole screen while we wait once again. I think this is the last time waiting though. After this, we should be in to the desktop. So uh, yeah, let's just wait for this to finish. And that's it, you're done. You've installed Windows 10 unactivated. So let me go check it out right now. If we check out this PC and look at the properties, you should be able to see right here that it says Windows is not activated. And when you try to go to do things like personalize, um, it says up here that you need to activate Windows before you can personalize your PC. So you're not gonna be able to change like uh, the colors and themes and stuff, or you can't change the background via this menu. But uh, you can, however, still set a different background. One of the viewers actually told me about this. You can go find the file and if you right click it, you can set your desktop as that. So that's how you can change the background still. You can't personalize the other thing like the themes. But yeah, there you have it. So now that we have that installed, let's talk about some of the super frequent comments and questions that you usually see. The first one is, what are the limitations? So as I discussed before, most of the limitations are cosmetics. It's gonna be not being able to change your background through the personalization, but as I showed, you can uh, right click on the file and find it anyways. It's gonna be not being able to change the theme, like the color scheme of the start bar and menu, and it's gonna be that watermark that appears on the bottom right corner. But other than that, through personal use, I couldn't find anything else that was too limiting. So I actually had to go look and research as to what other features are disabled. And the only other thing that I could find that came up 
was that you can't sync your user settings from like a different Windows account. So let's say you had multiple Windows installs. If you had activated Windows, you can sync the settings that you had per computer so that they're all one common thing under your same Microsoft account. But other than that, uh, that's something I don't use anyways. Uh, there's not much else and you still get updates. A lot of people also ask how long will this last? And this is mostly due to previous versions of Windows like Windows 7 and 8, having kind of like a cutoff period if you weren't activated where it would either sh uh, have like a prompt that would shut your computer down uh, every so often. And to my knowledge, this is going to be indefinite. I've personally used Windows 10 unactivated on one of my systems for up to six months and I'm still doing it now. So it's a rolling count, it's gonna be seven months soon. And I know of people who've done it for over a year and they've had no issues other than the watermark occasionally appearing saying to update, but there's no prompts that pop up to shut you down and there's no locking you out of your computer. So for the time being, it is indefinite, but Microsoft may change that in the future. And if they do, I'll make an update video and make this one obsolete. Why not just pirate Windows? I'm not going to encourage people to, but if you're someone who is okay with pirating, then you're gonna do it anyways. Making this video, the sole purpose was to show people who are not okay with pirating an alternative. And they're gonna have to kind of go off their own judgment with, you know, the morality of doing this in the first place. Why not just buy like a super cheap key from a reseller? That's a tough one to answer because uh, if you think about it, the Windows keys retail in America for around $100 depending on the version and if it's OEM or not. And a lot of these key resellers are selling keys for anywhere from like $10 to $15. And you gotta think about how they're getting the keys in the first place to sell it for that much. And the only thing that I can come across that explains how they're able to sell these keys so cheap is that they're getting like bulk volume licenses uh, that are meant to be sold somewhere else for a lot cheaper. Like think about it, a third world country cannot afford an operating system for $100. They can, however, afford it for like $5, right? So Microsoft decides, all right, I'm gonna sell, you know, a thousand of these to manufacturers over in like the Philippines, and they're gonna print in the systems and sell it to the people of the Philippines. But somewhere along the line, from them selling it for five bucks to whoever gets it, uh, it somehow gets reverted back to being sold in the US market for $10. So the guy, instead of putting it, you know, on the system in the Philippines and selling it, he wants to make a profit on those keys that he bought for $5 and double up selling them for $10 here in America. Now there's not much proof or there's not like a way to, you know, validate where a key is coming from when you're buying from these gray market sites. So it's kind of up to your own discretion. Like you could say that if Microsoft wanted to prevent this, they should have put like a region lock on it or something like that to prevent this from happening. But there's not. So you get keys in the US for like 10 to 15 bucks. Um, whether or not you should buy them or not is up to you. A lot of people have said that some of these key get, uh, you know, once Microsoft finds out about this, uh, they deactivate it down the line. So, I mean, I guess that's not an issue because then you go to unactivated windows, which is what this video is talking about in the first place. I'm not telling you to buy it or not. I'm just giving you the information um, and just kind of, you know, driving discussion on this. I would love to hear your input on this. And now for the last question, which I actually want all of you to answer down below so that we can generate some good discussion. And that is, why do you think Windows is allowing this in the first place? Like, why are they giving you a tool freely that allows you to install their newest OS and even get updates and use it for free without first putting $100 into their pocket? Uh, across the internet, if you look this up, there are so many different reasons and answers to this. Some of them are just pure speculation, but some of them are downright accurate and there's evidence to back them. But across all those answers, the three that I have come to kind of agree with and found made the most sense is, for one, they're making money off of you regardless of if you pay for that, you know, the license. Just by you using the OS, even the unactivated version, they're still getting your private data that they can sell to other companies for like targeted advertisements or just selling the data for like survey uses or demographics. Uh, they're gonna make money if you're using the OS regardless. Uh, the second reason is because of market share. If you're using Windows 10, you're not using OS X or Linux. So in the whole OS competition sphere, they're gonna have more representation. And then the third reason is because of uh, commonality for like user support. Uh, if everyone's on Windows 10, that's all they have to support. But if you look back, there's Windows 10, Windows 8, Windows 7, Windows Vista, Windows XP. I forget when they stopped supporting some of the older ones or if they even stopped at all. 
but if they can get everyone on the Windows 10, it's just gonna be easier for them in terms of supporting the consumer, us. Um, but those are the reasons that I found that made the most sense. Uh, let me know down below if you agree with that or if you disagree with that or if you know any other information um, so that you can teach us all something. But um, that's gonna wrap it up for this video. So if you found it, uh, you know, enjoyable, helpful, entertaining, please be sure to leave a thumbs up. If you found the opposite, then leave a thumbs down. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing if you enjoy the rest of my content. And I look forward to reading all your answers down below in the comment section, whether they be controversial or not, or if they agree or disagree with me. I look forward to reading them anyways, because there's always an opportunity to learn. But uh, yeah, I will see you in the next video. Bye.